You know, as a teacher, I'm normally pretty quick to support the idea that talking to strangers over the internet's a really bad idea, but honestly, I kind of appreciate these people ignoring it at least this once. Hey everybody, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whenever it is that you're joining us. It's kind of a meh kind of day here in Connecticut. And whether you've realized it or not, you're listening to the Uncurated Catholic Show, where we celebrate the random, the messy, and the real. I'm your host, Torin Burke, youth minister and teacher by day, writer, student, and thinker of long thoughts by night, and somewhere in between I like to sit down and share what's been on my heart and occupying my mind. Right here, each and every week, we may chat about God, life, liberty, happiness, TikTok trends, carnivore diets, really whatever seems worth sharing, all in the time it takes me to drink my morning coffee. So grab yourself a cup of whatever works for you. And before we begin today's show, make sure you check me out at torrenburke.com, or you can follow the show on Instagram at uncuratedcatholic. Let's go. Today's brew is a Colombian blend from Mystic Monk Coffee, and I am rocking my official Uncurated Catholic Show mug. You know, I feel like it would be at this point that I say, like, hey, merch is available at such and such a place, but alas, this happens to be a one of a kind compliment to my friend Carrie. Perhaps someday they will be available, but today is not that day, so tough break. It's only for me. But anyway, coffee in hand. You know, this weekend before last, my wife and I we were visiting some of her family for the 4th of July, as people tend to do, right? Hopefully you were able to get out and do something fun over the weekend. Um, and for whatever reason, the subject of names came up. And I was posed with a question uh, as to whether or not I would ever want to name my son Torin Jr., and it really didn't take long for me to respond because I had actually given some thought to that particular question before. And really, no disrespect. I mean, no disrespect to anybody who does that. Any juniors out there, right? Or seniors or thirds or fourths or fifths. I just like the fact that I'm not a junior myself. You know, I, I, I almost feel like I kind of have my own identity. And perhaps that sounds bad. And I, again, I mean, no disrespect if you, you know, are a junior. I, I think there's something incredibly you know, cool and noble about family names being passed down. It's just not really kind of my cup of tea. Well, for the last few days, you know, I've been thinking about this whole thing, names, you know, what they mean, how they relate to our identity. It may seem so commonplace, but really for anyone who's had the privilege of naming a child, it's actually really quite the task, right? Well, you know, we don't yet have kids of our own. Brent and I actually have a list in mind, you know, um, you always want to be prepared, right? So yeah, a list, you know, just in case. We've got, you know, the first first round, second round, third round, boy names, girl names, you name it. Um, you know, you tend to think about the meanings. You tend to, to think about the sound of it as it's spoken, right? You maybe even think about kind of what jerk kids might, you know, kind of butcher it or craft it into a punchline, how they might go about that. You know, my my last name is actually kind of interesting in that there's a common debate in my family over its pronunciation, believe it or not. The prevailing way is Burke, as in like jerk, right? And there is a, there's actually a, a handbag company. I don't, it's not just handbags, leather goods, belts, whatever, um, Dooney and Burke that, that use that pronunciation, Right, so it's it's not just me. It's not just that part of the family. It's you know other, um, another family does the same thing. Well, my brother and actually my late grandmother they say bork, like as in pork. And honestly, I have no idea why this is the case. Every time it comes up, though, I thank the good Lord that bork didn't win the day. Right, like porky borky. Like, could you imagine that literally is like handing that over to the jerk kids on the playground? But anyway, you know, these, these are things that we think about. So a lot goes into names and, and for good reason. You know, I often get comments on my name, mostly because it, it remains rather uncommon. My brother's name is Logan, which really was more unique back in the 80s. Um, but it, since then, it's it's kind of boomed, I think. I've come across a number of Logans, but Torin kind of remains off the radar. You know, there's this Christian singer that kind of popped up a while back named Torin Wells, but he completely spells it wrong. There's like an A, there's a U in there. I don't know what that's about, but it's supposedly said the same, so there's that. But 
you know, having kind of a weird name makes you easy to find. <laughs> is, is, is that a positive or is it a negative? I'm not sure. You know, nobody listening better claim that they've never Googled themselves. We've all done it. There's no shame in the game. But when you have a weird name like I do, right, you, you kind of get a bit of a thrill. <laughs> because you, you tend to pop up really easily. It's easy to find you. And I, I know, again, that sounds kind of creepy, but it's almost kind of like being famous. But without everybody actually caring who you are, right? Like you put in your name, it's like, whoa, you know, all your different, you know, social media and blah, 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 blah. It's like, whoa, you know, I'm such a big deal. No, not really. But it kind of just gives that illusion. So, you know, with all this all this name stuff floating around in my head recently, I kind of decided to do the only rational thing. Right? I, I wanted to message a bunch of other Torrens over Facebook and see what's what. And that's exactly what I did. There's worse ways to spend the time, I suppose, but in order to make the effort anything worthwhile, I had to set some guidelines, of course, first. Obviously, the person had to have Torn as a first name. Now, apparently, it can be used as a surname. I saw a bunch of that middle name. I have no interest in talking to those people. Sorry. Second, (laughs) they had to appear to be, at least in some way, a real person. I don't want to waste time here. There were a bunch of accounts with just like Torin as a single word. No middle, last name, nothing, just Torin. And there would be like weird profile pictures or there would be like nothing at all. Not really sure what those are about, but I wanted to talk to actual people. So I, I kind of steered towards those that at least seemed real while trying not to give too much thought to it, really. So they all had to have a last name, some semblance of a legit profile. Third, and finally, they had to obviously have their setting as such that allowed outside messaging. I had to message them, and I'm a stranger after all, right? So they, those are kind of the three criteria that I used in determining who to message. And when all was said and done, I ended up messaging 25 different Torrens. And within a few hours, I actually heard back from five And so I kind of wanted to take a few minutes to uh, share some thoughts about the whole thing. First, you know, I had a lot of fun. (laughs) I kind of recommend, if you got a weird name, I kind of recommend doing this, you know. Um, It was was a bit of a thrill, you know, when somebody would respond. You know, were they going to be weirded out? What were they going to say? Were they actually going to respond meaningfully? Each time a response would come in, it was a lot of fun, and and I'm really thankful that these individuals saw fit to actually message back a stranger, despite the fact that that is rarely a good idea to do. I guess, I guess my my message was enough. I, I tried to make it seem like I'm a real person. I was like, "Hey, I'm doing a bit for a podcast. We're named Torin. What's up?" <laughs> you know. Um, so that was the first thing. It was just, it was a lot of fun. I I kind of recommend doing it. You know, it's it's it's. It's harmless in a lot of ways, I think. People can ignore you, or they can reach out if they want. Second, the Torrens of the world (laughs) seem to place a great deal of thought into our shared name, at least the five that I talked to and myself. So six of us, the Torrens of the world. We represent all the Torrens, the six of us, right? I asked two things in my initial message, right? Again, I I reached out. I was like, hey, I'm a fellow (laughs) Torren. doing a bit for a podcast. (laughs) What's up? I was like, describe yourself in a single sentence. That was the first thing. I just, nothing crazy personal. I just wanted to get a gist of like who you are, right? And what your thoughts, perspectives, feelings, where do you stand towards our name, right? Um, I also, you know, made sure to let them know you know, that, you know, none of their personal information would be released, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and I guess it was enough to where these five people felt comfortable enough to reach out, you know, and they each kind of had a, a little bit of a story Well, all but one, but, um, most of them kind of had a little bit of a story and it was kind of neat. And we went back and forth a little bit. So Torn number one described himself as an outgoing thrill seeking entrepreneur who started a digital marketing agency called Torn Recommends. By the way, it's actually legit. There's a website. I've looked it up. <laughs> he was not lying. He, right, this Torn, Torn number one, was named after another Torn, so it wasn't that hopeful. There's others, who happened to be a wrestling coach of his father's. 
And like myself, right, he appreciated the uniqueness of it. He was also actually really kind of inspired by the whole experiment that I was doing. He was the first one to reach out. And he thought it was great. He's kind of one of these extroverted guys, I could tell, you know, into marketing and sales and stuff. And he was like, hey, we should recruit an army of Torrens to help me sell, you know, my marketing services. It was funny. We got a good laugh out of it. We went back and forth. But I do have to say, right, if world domination does take place in the future, I apologize ahead of time. There was nothing I could do to stop it. It was bound to happen. Another Torrin who actually just described himself as bipolar. That was it. He's like, I describe myself as bipolar. <laughs> It's like, ooh, what am I getting into, right? Well, he thought it was actually kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. Um, people would either mispronounce it or they would engage him in conversation about it, and he didn't really like that. Um, but he did appreciate sometimes the fact that it was a great conversation starter. He was very aware of the Gaelic origins of the name, um, coming from Thor and Chief and Commander and, and a couple different places kind of in the Gaelic tradition. Um, but yeah, so he, he kind of had a, a tinge of, of negativity towards it, which was interesting. I have to say, when I was younger, I, I didn't really care for it myself. Um, I, I, it just seemed weird. It seemed out of place. But now that I'm older, I really do appreciate it. Tour number three was pretty pumped up about the whole thing. I'll just read you. He was like, yo, what's up, my man? I love my name. <laughs> I love this. Strangers on Facebook. My grandfather is from Ireland, and he pushed the name because of the chief meaning. He said it was a strong name. My parents love the cultural heritage. I've definitely embraced the name, he said. I have a Celtic dragon tattoo due to the fact of the ancient Irish and Celtic chiefs flying dragons on their banners. It was kind of interesting. Wouldn't change my name for anything. And then he goes on to describe himself. He's like, I make no apologies. I'm frank. Don't care how, how others perceive me. So torn number three. Super pumped about getting in there and sharing a bit of a story. So awesome. I do appreciate it. Number four. Torn number four actually happens to be a young lady, a teaching assistant. And she actually shared with me that her mother was also a Torin, but that she had only ever heard of men holding the name. Now, I did not mention this to her, but interestingly enough, some of the 25 I reached out to were women as well. Um, one of them was like a soccer, not a soccer player, but she juggled and did tricks and stuff. At least that's what I gleaned from her account. You know, so Torin number four, you're not alone. <laughs> there seems to be other girl Torins. Um, but, you know, I suppose that kind of gets to the heart of another thing I learned about the whole thing. It's, it's actually surprisingly diverse, right? I, I know the Irish origins of the name. But I saw both men and women of all different skin tones. It was actually kind of cool at the diversity of people that just popped up on Facebook. It was really neat. So, tour number five. Didn't really have much to say other than he was friendly, he was honest, and he liked how unique the name was. I will say this, though, tour number five. Based on your profile picture, you seem to be rocking a pretty awesome Viking-esque beard. So, kudos to you, Torn five. We are brothers in more ways than one. And I respect that. So, a man of few words, but I appreciate him reaching out nonetheless. So, all in all, I really enjoyed chatting with my Torin posse, right? <laughs> a few of us actually went back and forth a few times. You know, perhaps they're listening right now. None of them asked what the podcast was. Um, they might have seen it on my profile or, or whatever else, but if, you know, maybe they are listening and if so, thank you all for playing along. If more Torrens reach out, I would be happy. I'll be sure to uh, let you all know in a future episode. If you happen to know or are a fellow Torrent, join the club and feel free to reach out as well. So along this whole theme of names, I just yesterday ran across an article outlining supposedly 40 illegal names from around the world. Now, naturally, I had to skim the first two, but then immediately I thought, hey, you know what, I'm going to put this away for now, and I can do kind of a, a shared response type thing, and that's what I'm going to do. Frankly, it really did kind of pique my curiosity. Um, I feel like most of these types of articles are just clickbait, but here's to hoping. Um, so, you know, in light of, of the conversation today, I thought we would uh, dive into this and see what we see. So without further ado, Alrighty, so the very first name on the list is Nutella. Now, a couple things first come to mind. This was one of the ones that I had seen already. So I've had kind of an unfair 
couple moments to think about this. The first thing, supposedly the the judge that um, in France, I guess, ruled against, I guess there was some legislation, or rather not legislation, I guess there was a, a case regarding the name. These are all illegal after all. The judge in France um, didn't rule because of copyright laws. In fact, it was, quote, because it would make her the target of derision. Now, I kind of get that. I am not necessarily sure that I am keen on judges getting involved in what people name their children. I, you know, I, I suppose there could be, you know, some emotional abuse component to it where we have to be kind of careful to not just outright, you know, discredit any possibility of it happening. But Nutella, I don't know. I, I think if, if somebody told me that this was a copyright issue, I would totally understand that. The fact that this might make the child a target of derision or contempt or ridicule, um, I'm not so sure I would necessarily agree with that, but Nutella. Lovely. Let's get into some new ones. Ooh, Prince William. <laughs> okay, so here we are again in France, and somebody is trying to pass off Prince William, two words, by the way, not even hyphenated, as a first name. And again, we have another French judge ruling that it might lead to the child being mocked. Curious that in France we have two cases, at least, and we just started the list. Two cases of preventing a name due to mockery. Prince William. I suppose William is a name, and I suppose we've seen Prince be used as a name. I don't know. Prince William. Interesting. Oh, Lord. Okay. On this list, we have... I don't even know how to pronounce this. Um, it's a, it looks like a series of letters. B, R, F, X, X, C, C, X, X, M, N, etc. It's, oh, there's some letters, or rather numbers. 1, 1, 1, 1, 6 at the very end. So apparently in Sweden, these parents are Swedish, um, there are strict laws in Sweden, which I think I had actually heard before in a documentary, where you actually have to submit your name to the authorities that you want to name your child. And it has to be like approved because there are names that you're not allowed to use. Um, And I guess in 1991, the people were kind of protesting this idea. So they sent this really obnoxious, I'm not even going to bother counting, I don't know, 25, 30 letters with some numbers at the end. Um, uh, Supposedly it's pronounced Albin. Um, But let's see... Oh, and apparently it was approved. (laughs) The parents, I guess, were actually fined due to failing to submit the name by the child's fifth birthday. So I don't don't know what they were calling the kid for the first five years, but it was kind of a matter of protest. So I guess that's that's not even really really legal. Anyway, I don't know why that's on the list. Metallica, Lego, and Elvis. Again, Swedish parents, um, they had to go to court over the names Metallica, Lego, and Elvis, and they all won. Well, see, now I'm confused. How are these illegal names? And again, I would question copyright issues. I know definitely Lego, I'm sure, is strictly copyright protected. I mean, that's a pretty serious brand. Elvis, being that he's dead, I don't know how how much the estate would want to really fight over that, um, Metallica, yeah, I could, I could see a battle there too, but Lego, I don't know, I just, they're so internationally known, um, Metallica, not so much internationally, but Lego, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that that's the case, Ikea, all right, so while some Swedish parents got Metallica, Lego, and Elvis approved, I don't know why that's on the illegal list, but Ikea supposedly was not allowed, and that makes a lot of sense, you know, so I, I'm already seeing that there's a lot of, um, already in this list and we're just what, five in, six in, and I'm already seeing a lot of inconsistencies, but again, we're dealing with different countries. So let's see what else. All right. So Saint. um, so supposedly Kim Kardashian and Kanye, right? They, they chose this name for their child, but in New Zealand, apparently you can't give your child a name that resembles official titles. And I guess saint seems to be an official title. Now, as a Catholic, 
kudos to New Zealand. I feel like New Zealand tends to be very more on the on the progressive side of things, just as far as their government and society is concerned. So I'm kind of surprised it's not kind of a hands-off, say la vie, you know, name your kid whatever you want to call it, whatever you want, or don't name it at all type situation. But Saint, no, no official titles, and they, they support the idea of saint being an official title. Interesting, I'm sure it's not a church-related matter, but anyway. Also in New Zealand, you cannot uh, name your child Roman numerals. Apparently, you can name your child a spelled-out number, you can give them a silly name, um, but no Roman numerals. Interesting, New Zealand. Let's see, let's look through the list and see what... A period. <laughs> Supposedly, and they pronounced it full stop. That's lovely. Again, in New Zealand, um, you're not allowed to put punctuation in names. Now, I would wonder if that includes a hyphen. I don't necessarily think hyphen is punctuation, though I don't know what else you would call it. So I wonder if they if they approve of that, but I guess you cannot use punctuation in New Zealand. Um, a set of parents used a period, which they pronounced full stop, and it backfired. Apparently in Mexico, officials released a list of names um, that were rejected by the government because they could lead to bullying, and some of the names on that list include Robocop, Scrotum, and Facebook. Curious? I think I see the merit in some of that. <laughs> I suppose I, I'm thankful I don't have any of those names. Linda, interesting, which is a common name here in the United States. I mean, I think we all probably know some Linda, maybe more. Apparently, it's forbidden in Saudi Arabia. It was. It's not in line with, quote, social traditions. Interesting. And Lauren and Maya seem to also be on the list as well. Interesting. So, Tom, I guess Portugal, right, they have regulations about what are allowed in names, and you cannot use nicknames or alternate spellings. Interesting. So, you can't just legally name your child Tom. They have to be like Tomas, or a full name, and then you can just kind of, I guess, call them Tom unofficially, without the government knowing. Thor, also in Portugal, uh, they forbid non-Portuguese names, Oh, that's curious. They forbid non-Portuguese names, and it has an 82, Portugal that is, has an 82-page list of names that have been banned. Thor, Nirvana, and Paris are all included on that list. That's curious. That's some pretty, that's some pretty robust legislation. You can't name your child a non-Portuguese name. Hmm, I think that kind of strays into something that I don't, I'm not too keen on, but Apparently in Malaysia in 2006, um, they tightened up some of the restrictions on their names. Um, somebody tried to uh, present a name that I guess means snake, um, another name meaning smelly head, and another meaning insane, and they were all added to this list of restricted names in Malaysia, so that's interesting. And let's see, let's do one more. Let's go to the very end. We only made it up to 19. I see Camilla Friday. Oh, apparently in Italy, court ruled that it fell into the ridiculous or shameful category of names and ordered it changed. You can't name your child Friday in Italy. They'll make you change it. Oh, that's funny. Okay, let's see. Apparently in China, you're not allowed to use symbols. Somebody tried to use the ampersand sign. That didn't work. Judas, number 26, in Switzerland, put a stop to religious names that cause kids undue harm. <laughs> religious names that cause kids undue harm. So poor Judas, you can't... <laughs> poor Judas. You can't use the name Judas in Switzerland, apparently. Eh, maybe that's a good thing. Lucifer, I guess, in Germany. Uh, somebody tried to name a child Lucifer, um, and they called it inappropriate, so that didn't work. Let's see. Let's go to the very end. In Morocco, one letter makes all the difference. Sarah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sarah with an H, S-A-R-A-H, is banned because the spelling is too Hebrew. 
So in Morocco, if you want to be called Sarah, you have to drop the H and just do S-A-R-A, which is much more Arabic, supposedly. So I guess the final name on this list is, it's really not so much a name as it is a phrase, Talula does the hula from Hawaii. Yep, that apparently is one whole name, I guess in New Zealand, <laughs> not even in Hawaii, but in New Zealand. Um, so Talula does the hula from Hawaii. I guess this is a girl who turned nine. Uh, she complained about her name and they actually lost custody of her because the judge said, quote, it was so profoundly concerned, the judge that is, was so profoundly concerned about the very poor judgment. And the girl was allowed, end quote, and the girl was allowed to legally change her name. So she was legally named Talula does the hula from Hawaii. And they're living in New Zealand. My goodness. So some of these are not actually illegal. The first, a couple in the in the early part of the, the list actually won the court cases. So I don't know what that's about. But anyway, you know, I suppose sometimes I think Torin is kind of strange. But at least I'm not Tallulah does the hula from Hawaii. And I think we, uh, Tallulah, if you're listening, well, I guess that's not your name anymore. If the girl formerly known as Tallulah does the hula from Hawaii, if you're listening, God bless you. <laughs> it's deeply unfortunate that uh, that all of that happened in the girl's life, but um, it, I guess it goes to show just the power that names do have, huh? But my glass is empty, which means that's all for this episode of the Uncurated Catholic Show. I cannot thank you enough for tuning in and listening. Again, you can always reach me at tornburk.com. Burke, not Bork. Or you can always reach us on Instagram at Uncurated Catholic. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, always feel free to reach out. I'm always down to chat. Make sure you tune in next week, and why don't we part ways with a word of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, you call us by name, and you call us to do things which maybe we're aware of, things which we've yet to discover, things that might draw us out of our comfort zone, things that might challenge us to do things we never thought possible but lord we know that you're working in our lives and as people go without all the good gifts that we enjoy we ask you to encourage us empower us to be your hands and feet in the world allow us to hear you speak our name call us by name identify us enter into our life in a personal way so that we might hear and respond to your call Lord, we thank you for all the blessings in our lives and all the good gifts which we enjoy. And it is in your holy name we pray. Amen, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All the best. God love you. Benedictus Domino. Let us bless the Lord.